Hey guys, Sam Mole here. Today we're gonna go over the Mr. Pandaria Death Knight Talent Calculator. That was a big mouthful. Um, I'm gonna go over everything here, except for explaining all the abilities that we already have, right? I'm gonna go over the changes that we're gonna see and um, just take it step by step and explain everything that's happening and uh, the perks and all this stuff, right? Okay, so let's get started. Now, you choose like you do right now in WoW, you, ch you choose what you want, like if you want to be a tank, Blood Death Knight, or a Frost, or an Unholy Death Knight. And uh, if you choose to be a tank, you click Blood, and then you can see a list of all the things that you get. And, um, well, you get the basic stuff, you know, armor skills, uh, weapon skills, uh, rune forging, blood plague, death coil, blah, 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 right? And uh, we have some stuff down here. Uh, for example, uh, Rune Strike. Where is it? Rune Strike. You only get that as a Blood Death Knight now. So you don't have Rune Strike anymore as Frost or Unholy. Um, other than that, you get all these things that you can see that's marked with a star. Uh, Heart Strike, Send the Blood. Uh, on a Pale Horse, by the way. That's You get that in any spec now, which is really cool. I like that. Um, all the presences you still get improved blood presence. That's obviously only for blood because that's what makes you crit immune. And um, what else? Oh yeah, there's this new ability that we get at 81. Control undead uh, dominates the target undead creature, forcing it to do your bidding. While controlled, the time between the undead minions attacks uh, is increased by 30%. And its casting speed is slowed by 20%, last up to 5 minutes. I haven't been doing a whole lot of reading about this, so fill in with some comments below. It seems to be either that you can control your, um, your ghoul or kind of like a mind control kind of thing for, for undeads. But it seems kind of cool. I, I kind of like this one. Uh, I would really like to see this one in, um, in action though. So we'll have to wait until the beta for that, and I will show you guys exactly what this does and how it works. Um, other than that, you know, you get all your your usual stuff in Blood, uh, Will of ne uh, the Necropolis, and um, all the usual stuff like Blood Parasites, and um, yeah, you get you get all the stuff that you no would normally get for Blood, except for the you know, there's this new ability Control on that um, for Frost. Uh, you you get all these things again. You get all the the standard stuff, uh, but look at all the things by the way that you get at level fifty five. As soon as you make your death knight, see you get howling blast right away. That is really 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 awesome because you had to like wait a long time before you could spec into that, at least nowadays. But now you just get it straight away when you make your death knight. That's kind of cool. I like that. It also makes me wonder how they're going to do the starting area for Death Knights with the, uh, you know, you, you do a quest, you get some talent points that you can put in and all that stuff. So it, it kind of makes me wonder how they're going to get about that with the questing in the starting area for Death Knights. But um, we'll get into that once the beta lands as well. Um, but yeah, another really, really awesome thing is this. Uh, if I can find it, Killing Machine is there, Rhyme is there. There it is. Might of the Frozen Waste and Threat of Thessarian. You get them both when just choosing Frost. And that is really, really awesome because now you don't have to like spec into either being a dual wielder or a two-hander. You can be both. And I like this change a whole lot because that means that when you just choose to be Frost, you can be whatever you want. Two-hand or dual wield, doesn't matter. You can be whatever you want. There's not, no people that's going to be like, oh my god, you're dual wielding, but you didn't spec into Threat of Thessarian. So, yeah. It makes things a whole lot easier that you get all these things straight off the bat. And um, that you get them. Well, not straight off the bat, but that you get these things uh, just when you level. Instead of having to, um, having to spec into them, so to say. And I like these changes a whole lot. Um, unholy is pretty much the same. I mean, you get all the standard stuff 
and um, you know, reaping, master of ghouls, uh, unholy might, even unholy frenzies in here somewhere. Uh, Shadow infusion again on a pale horse goes for all specs. You get it for all specs. Festering strike, sudden doom, conjugation, conjug contagion. Sorry, contagion, contagion. Increase the damage of your diseases spread via pestilence by 100%. Is this new, guys? I haven't played Unholy for quite some time, so I'm not completely up to date about the Unholy stuff. Contagion. This seems new to me. Fill me in in the comments below, guys. And uh, see, Unholy Frenzy, you get that. You don't see again. You don't have to spec into these things. That's where the, the talent stuff over here comes in handy. I'll go over those in a few seconds. Uh, Anti magic shell as well. You get that for all specs though. Um, Dark transformation is in there, and uh, the mastery stuff is in here as well. And the strike at eighty three, and uh, yeah, that's that's about what you get. But a cool thing here, just to sum it up, you get on a pale horse, regardless of what you choose, which is really awesome. I like that change. And uh, for Frost, especially for Frost, that you can just get the um, Threat of Thessarian and Might of the Frozen Waste, that you get this stuff, that you don't have to spec into it, so you can do wield and two hand uh, if you want to. You can just choose whatever you want. And I like this cha these changes a whole lot. Now let's go over the actual talents that you can spec into. So at level 15, you get three choices. Uh, you can get uh, Roiling Blood. And it says your Blood Boil ability now also triggers uh, Pestilence if it strikes a diseased target. So that means you don't have to use Pestilence. If you use Blood Boil, bam, your disease is just spread all over the place. Uh, corpse Explosion uh, detonates a nearby diseased ribbon corpse to deal... Some amount of damage, shadow damage uh, to enemies within 15 yards, afflicting them with blood plague and frost fever. See, this is kind of cool. I like this as well. Blah, 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 all kinds of stuff, whatever. Uh, outbreak, you can choose that as well. I probably, as I'm probably going to go frost again. And next expansion, I will probably choose outbreak because I like that. I don't want to like use frost and unholy runes to apply my diseases. Um, so that's, that's the, at level 15, you get these three at level 30, you get Lichborn and that's the exact same way as it is now. Uh, anti-magic zone, exactly the same, except you used to be able to spec into it in unholy so that it granted you, uh, now it just grants you 75% uh, damage mitigation from spell damage and you, you could, in, a, in unholy, you could spec into getting a hundred percent. So I don't know how they're going to get around that. I don't see any glyphs as well. So maybe there's going to be a glyph for it. I don't know. And uh, Bone Shield. Same as it is now. And um, I'm going to stop right here and say that I like this stuff right now. Because this all this stuff enables hybrid specking. Which is something that I have been craving since Wrath of the Lich King. So I really, really enjoy this. I, I really like seeing all these things. So that you can... As a Blood Death Knight, let's say you're a tank, you can have like, you have two specs and you have, let's say you have two tanking specs. You could have one for magic damage mitigation. So you could choose anti-magic zone. And that's really, really awesome. I like this a whole lot. Because th this makes you able, I, I could even choose this as, as a Frost Death Knight for PvP. This is so awesome. I, I like this a whole lot. So, but that, that's the that's the three things you can choose. You can only choose one, one thing, and then you have to move on to the next. So it's like, let's say, outbreak, and then you can't choose. See, now those are darkened out, so you have to choose something in the next one at level thirty, and so on and so forth. Um, can I remove that? Yep. So at level forty-five, three other things is death advance. Uh, while your unholy runes are both depleted, movement, uh, movement impairing effects may not reduce you below 75% of normal movement speed. This could really, really come handy in PvP. Chillblains, exactly as it is right now, 
and this is this opens up again for the hybrid specking kind of thing you could choose this as unholy for pvp as well so th this this is gonna be fun then there's this new thing called as as asphyxiate I hope I, I pronounced that right. I'm really horrible at pro pronunciations. Uh, lifts an enemy target off the ground and crushes the th throat with dark energy, stunning them for five seconds. Uh, functions as a silence if the target is immune to stuns. But it replaces Strangulate. So just keep that in mind. It replaces Strangulate. But I find it kind of funny, like... Am I the only one that that's sitting here thinking, you know, come to the dark side, Luke? Because, you know, you're grabbing them by the throat and strangulating them, sort of say. Just kind of like, you know, Darth, Darth Vader all over again. But whatever. It, it's, it's, it's a neat thing. Asphyxiate. Kind of cool. Um, so, again, yet again, you have some really awesome choices here. I feel more that this is meant for pvp but you know the asphyxiate might come handy in a pve situation i don't know but uh but yeah cool stuff at level 60 you get death pact uh does the exact same thing it does right now in game then you get uh death death siphon uh consumes a death rune and deals 3116 shadow damage to an enemy uh healing the death knight for 75 percent of uh of damage dealt now i don't know about that damage number but if it's if it gets higher like if this is scale for like you know from the start and it, it, this number gets higher so let's say at level 90 in mist of pandaria you deal even more damage with this one i don't know maybe this one isn't gonna be as effective as this one I'm just saying, maybe Death Pact isn't going to be as effective as um, Death Siphon. But we'll have to see. Yet again, I'll cover all this in the beta once we get to that point, uh, point as well. Then Vampiric Blood. Now, I talked a little bit about glyphs before. And this makes me wonder if there's even going to be glyphs. Because uh, Vampiric Blood temporarily grants Death Knight 15% of maximum health and increases the amount of health received from healing spells uh, and effects by 25% for 10 seconds. After the effects expired, uh, the health is lost, like usual. But normally, it either granted you extra health, so it increased your health pool, or when you used a glyph, it granted you extra healing received. But now it gives you both. So if there's no glyphs in the game, Vampiric Blood has just gotten a big buff. So that is really awesome. And keep in mind, these can be used in any spec. And this is really cool. So you can choose to get this stuff for, for Frost or Unholy as well, instead of only Blood, and use it for PvP. Yet again, this whole thing with, the, um, with hybrid specking really comes to play. And I, this is just so awesome. Moving on. 75. Blood tap. Now, I don't get why this is in here when you look at these other things that's here. Because blood tap, you know, normally you have blood tap in any spec. And then you had uh, runic empowerment. Or if you spec into unholy and you spec into uh, runic corruption, you got that. But look at the, the tool tip here. Uh, each damaging death coil, frost strike, or rune strike generates a blood, uh, blood charge up to a maximum of six charges. Rune tap consumes three blood charges to activate a random fully depleted rune as a death rune. Now, that's a big change. Normally this just gave you a goddamn rune back and I see this as sort of a stupid little nerf. Maybe it's gonna be cool, I don't know. I'll cover it in the beta again, but it's it's like you can see it's it's been changed. It's not as it is now in the game. Uh, runic Empowerment is exactly like it is in game now. So, yeah. It, uh, when you land a damaging uh, Death Coil, Frost Strike, or Rune Strike, you have a 45% chance to activate a, a random fully depleted rune. Um, 
granted with blood tap you get the choice to you know you, you, you get to choose when you want that fully depleted rune up here it's like a, a percentage chance but still uh, it's it's the same as it is in game now and the same with the uh, runic corruption if you're frost pve you know you're dueling frost dps this might come handy though since so far right now at least uh, haste has been really good for for frost pve but um i don't know we'll have to see it's, it's ex exactly the same as it is right now in the game so um so yeah moving on to level 90 now here's the cool stuff um Gorfiend's Grasp. Shadowy tendrils coil around all enemies within 20 yards uh, of a target. Hostile or friendly. That means you can put it on your, your teammates in PvP, for example. Uh, or your one of your raid members. Uh, dealing uh, 2493 shadow damage and pulling them to the target's location. So this is going to be really interesting to see this one in action. Because I don't know if I can use this on myself. If I can, that means I can use this as appeal, sort of say in PvP. But this is re this is a really cool ability, and I like it a whole lot. Um, the next thing is Remorseless Winner, and from what I understood from what I heard happening at BlizzCon, this is gonna replace Hungering Cold. Because Hungering Cold is not part of uh, of Frost anymore. It's not in here. Hungering Cold is gone. So Remorseless Winter should be the one uh, one thing that's going to replace it, sort of say. So it says, surrounds the Death Knight uh, with a swirling tempest of frigid air, dealing um, 3,777 frost damage to enemies within 10 yards every one second for 8 seconds. Each time Remorseless Winter deals damage, it reduces enemy movement speed by 15%, stacking up to 5 times. Upon receiving the fifth application, an enemy will be stunned for six seconds. Now, this is really cool. Like I said, again, if the damage actually scales, because, I mean, 3,777 frost damage isn't a whole lot, especially at level 90. But if these numbers scale up, then it, this is going to be really cool, because this could eventually do a lot of damage and be really, really powerful for PvP. So I'm liking this one a whole lot. Like I said before, I'm going to test this in the beta and, and show you guys everything about it. Uh, the last thing is Desecrated Ground. Like This is awesome as well. Corrupts the ground in an 8 yard radius beneath the Death Knight, dealing uh, 1246 shadow damage every 1 second for 10 seconds. While standing in this corruption, uh, the Death Knight is immune to crowd control effects. So this could really, really come into play in PvP as well. And um, I'm really looking forward to testing all these things. This was it for this time, guys. And um, I will be going a bit more in-depth about all this stuff once the beta lands and talk about, you know, possible ways to choose your talents for different situations. But for now, I just wanted to go over all these things to, to show you guys what's going on, what's going to happen so far. Remember, like I said, this is early stuff. A lot of these things are probably going to change, but you know, now you have an idea about which direction Blizzard are heading with their stuff. And so far, I think this is a win. I think this is really, really awesome. And all the customization you have with these talents that you can that you can choose is really, really awesome. I'm I'm liking this a whole lot. So yeah, that was it for this video, guys. If you liked it, please thumbs the video up. Maybe even favoriting it. It will help me out a whole bunch. If you did not like it, please thumbs it down. By all means, thumbs it down. And uh, leave me some comments. What do you think about all these changes so far with the, uh, with the, um, the new spec system and all this stuff for uh, Mist of Pandaria? Also, if you guys are interested in my opinions about the whole Mist of Pandaria expansion... Leave me some comments if you want to see a video about that, because I don't, I have not been made, I haven't made the video purely because I didn't want to go into that topic. But if th this is something that you really want me to talk about, then I will. But yeah, that was it, guys. Take care, have fun. See you in the next one.